Good morning, Hank. It's Friday, January 21st, 2011. I want to continue our discussion about how the truth resists simplicity by talking about narrative complexity, but in order to do that, I need to talk about my favorite person. Me! Okay, Hank, so the biggest award in young adult literature is called the Prince Award, which looks like this on a book and looks like this in a basement. And the single most important moment of my whole professional life happened five years ago, almost to the day when I received the call saying that Looking for Alaska, my first novel, had won the Prince Award. And it was especially meaningful to me because my first job after college was as a temp at the magazine Booklist. And on my first day at Booklist, I had to retype, that's how old I am, all these speeches that were given at the first Prince Award reception. And that is a good narrative, right? You start out with this 22 year old professional data interest who writes a novel for years and years at night and on the weekends, and then eventually it comes out and he wins the very award that he used to type the speeches for. And you can imagine this young writer working in isolation and getting rejected over and over and over again until a publisher takes a chance on him. But Hank, the actual story of how this book came to exist and have this shiny piece of gold on it is different and more complicated, so I thought I would try to tell that story today. So I did write this story at night and on the weekends for three years, but I had constant help from my friend Eileen Cooper, who was one of my bosses at Booklist and who's also an author. Eileen probably read and commented on like a dozen drafts of Looking for Alaska, which by the way wasn't even called Looking for Alaska until my friend Kier Graf came up with that title. Then once Eileen was happy and I'd paid Kier's two dollars for coming up with the title, Eileen and I sent it to Penguin and they agreed to publish it, provided I I revised extensively. Although I had no idea about how extensively I would have to revise it. So this book, for those of you who haven't read it, is about a guy who memorizes the last words of famous people and falls in love with a girl named Alaska. Only when Penguin agreed to buy the book, it wasn't about a guy who memorizes the last words of famous people. In fact, a lot of what people like about the book, from The Great Perhaps to The Labyrinth, came out in those revisions after I'd sold the book to Penguin. So I think about four years after I started, I had a reasonably finished manuscript, although it would be wrong to say that I wrote that book. The truth is that Eileen wrote parts of it and my my editor Julie Strauss Gable wrote parts of it and my wife wrote parts of it. In fact, all these people wrote at least a little bit of Looking for Alaska. And I am grateful to each and every one of those people, although no, they cannot have any of my royalties. We all like this idea that a book is created by a single person for a single reader because it's a narrative that makes sense. But the truth resists that simplicity. As the great Carl Sagan said, if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. So all these people worked together to make a book. It came out, 12 people in a room decided it should win this award, and I was really happy. And then a little part of me was like, so what? What I eventually realized is that the real business of books is not done by awards committees or people who turn trees into paper or editors or agents or even writers. We're all just facilitators. The real business is done by readers and the Looking for Alaska that you read is not quite like the Looking for Alaska that anyone else reads. The hundreds of thousands of Looking for Alaska readers stories are not something I can hold in my hand or even get my head around. But Hank, I do want to say to you and to all the nerdfighters who've read my books that being able to participate in big interesting conversations with you through stories like this one and my other books is really the most fulfilling thing about my life. Just kidding, it's Henry and Sarah. But you guys are great too. Seriously, if I didn't have such a cute kid and a great wife, you would be the top. Well, pizza. It goes Sarah and Henry, pizza, the rest of my family, Nerdfighteria, the Mountain Goats. That's my top five. Hank, I am Freedom and Panem, and I will see you on Friday. It is Friday. I'm so bad at that!